This is going to be a very quick um, workflow demo just to, uh, to highlight some of the key advantages of working with the ribbon. Now I'm going to select a group of surfaces. Not sure how many there are, so I'll open the surface or selection information dialog. And I have 537 surfaces selected. My first step is going to be convert, uh, to convert those surfaces into a single solid. I will simply select create solid from surfaces and PowerShape is now linking those surfaces together to form a single solid body and also checking the integrity of that solid at the same time. In this case PowerShape has decided that um, one of those surfaces is too small which is fine um, but it now says do you want to fix the faults in the solid notice that that is a recommendation uh, it's not compulsory so the solid does not get quarantined if it is not absolutely perfect you are still able to work with that solid uh, even though it's not quite perfect so PowerShape has now categorized the faults in the model and I can begin to repair them so I'm just going to select this fault here, this gap, and say so I want to do an automatic repair on that. Now the automatic repair in this case will re-intersect this face with the surrounding faces, and that does exactly what we want. We'll come back to displaying all of the solid faults. I'm going to do exactly the same for this whole fault. So what I want to do is the automatic repair. And you can see that although PowerShape has repaired the problem, uh, it's not necessarily repaired it in the way that would be um, particularly useful. So I'm going to undo that and open up the holes page. I'm going to select the two holes that are on opposite sides of the part. So there's one here and there's one over here. And I'm going to say instead of doing an automatic repair, I want to fill those holes with a non-tangent surface. And again, those holes are now repaired, uh, but this time in a much more suitable way. If I look at the gap faults that I have remaining, you'll see that there's a hole on one side of the part. I'm going to come back to this one in a moment. There's also something unusual going on here. And what's actually happened is that during the translation process, one surface has been found to be faulty. So in one one half has been deleted and on the other side uh, it's wound up with its trimming incorrect. I'm going to select that one surface and say extract the surface. That's the automatic fix that uh, SolidDoctor suggests. Going to select that surface, click on manage and say I want the trim engine editor. Select the boundary that's faulty and reverse it and then turn the trim region editor off. Now come to the general edits with that surface still selected and I want to mirror through the ZX plane. I'm going to apply that change so now I have two surfaces one here and one here. I'm just going to make sure I have both of them selected and then sew the, both of them back into my solid. So now I just have one remaining fault, which is this one on this large flat face at the top. Instead of editing the surface, in this case, I'm going to delete it. And this is just literally pulling a surface out of the solid and then deleting that surface. So I can then select the hole and say, what I want to do is to fill it with a non-tangent surface. I can now hit finish or I can hit recheck. Both will do the same thing. Both will recheck the solid uh, and let me out of the solid doctor only if the solid has been completely repaired. And in this case, the part is fully fixed.
The next step is to divide the part into cavity and core halves. So I'm going to use the wizard to do this. So click on the wizard page, click separate solids. And now it's simply a case of dragging the solids apart. Any faces that are ambiguous can be selected and then click on the appropriate half to put those surfaces where you want them. Now in this case, we need a slide on this back. So I'm going to add a new draw direction. By selecting some surfaces, add a new draw direction. You can see that direction is going off following the normal of those surfaces. I'm just going to click a more appropriate position somewhere on that back face and apply. If I now look from the side, I can begin to select the different faces and then connect them to a more appropriate direction so that these are going to be part of the, the sliding core that's necessary to mold out the rear tail lights. There's a few more surfaces here to select through. And when I'm happy that I've got everything completely selected, I can now hit finish. I'm going to display just one half of the solid on its own at the moment because this has some fairly obvious holes that I want to repair. So again, I'm going to select that solid, go to the solid manage and then open again the solid doctor. So this has found as expected four holes two of which are in this large face at the back. So I can select that single face and say so what I want to do is to repair those holes by removing any boundaries and that fills those two holes. The one on the inside, that one I'm going to repair with a non-tangent face. And the one that runs all the way around the outside, what I'm going to do is to say, I want to mark that boundary and go into edit mode. I can now exit the edit mode and continue and then say finish. So now this has given me a large curve that runs all the way around the outside of the part. Again, click on Manage so that I can get into the Merge and Spline tool. Then go to Surface, select that curve, and making sure that I'm working in the Z axis, I'm going to create a split surface. And I'm going to set the distance of my split surface to 100. Preview. You can see it's not entirely what I want, so I'm just going to change the options line to axes, preview again, and if I'm happy with the result, I can select OK. Finally, I'm going to select the solid and sew that surface into it, so that now I have a single large open solid. So now I can come straight back to my standard solid modeling tools. Just change the size of this block a little bit. Just make sure it's big enough to completely enclose the part. Make sure that that solid is active. And again, using the solids toolbar, join the two solids together. And finally, 
I can take the entire model and send it to PowerMill ready for machining.